you've been to our area, your friends have been to our area, and everybody's talking about Crab Island, and you're like, what the heck is Crab Island? Stick around, this is the video for you so that you can learn all the things Crab Island. What is going on? I'm AJ and this is Andrew and we're here with the Emerald Group on the Emerald Coast covering everything from Pensacola to Panama City Beach. We are getting calls, texts, emails and Facebook messages all the time from folks with questions about our area and we absolutely love it. So please, if you have questions, don't hesitate. Don't be intimidated. We're super fun. So just reach out to us. We love talking to you. And if you're looking to figure out everything there is to know about the Emerald Coast, whether you're here visiting or you're thinking about moving here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and tickle that little bell so that you'll be notified every single time we do a new video. So now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, let's talk all about Crab Island. So we're going to give you a little bit of the history. We're also going to talk about what it's like while we're out there and give you a ton of footage as we go. So AJ, let's get into it. I would love to get into Crab Island right now. Like, can we just Yeah, me go? too. What are we doing here? We should be shooting this at Crab Island. Here, we're going to hit pause. <laughs> I wish we could. I know. So let's talk about the fact that um, everyone calls it Crab Island, but it's not actually an island. Surprise, surprise. It's actually a sandbar in between Okaloosa Island and Destin, right there by the pass. So you're not actually going to see this, you know, island that you can come and pull up to and then just walk around um, on dry sand. It's actually still under the water. So you're going to you're going to get wet if you get on the island. So, yeah, that is our, our first fact about Crab Island. Yeah, surprisingly enough, if you came out there about 60, 70 years ago, it would be an island, but over time, all the hurricanes eventually pushed it out. So all that sand that is there, that sandbar, it's not natural. It's actually drudged out from the East Pass, which is the area that goes into the Gulf of Mexico uh, from the harbor. And they drudged it out, and then they set it all there, and it created this nice island. And then over time, the hurricanes eventually washed it away, and now it's in a great sandbar. So it's anywhere from one to about six feet deep. You can expect the average of it to be about one to three feet and almost everywhere you go probably closer to three feet i would definitely agree with that about three feet thinking about like when i stand up over there yeah, i can like still see yeah. <laughs> so um <laughs> What's really cool, though, is that you can still see all kinds of wildlife. Like, dolphins absolutely love it around there. We see some sharks out there sometimes, stingrays, jellyfish a lot of times, So now that you guys are excited at getting inside <laughs> of the water, no, it's pretty rare when you see those. Most of the time, especially the sharks, dolphins, any of the bigger fish typically stay on the outskirts of it. Um, and if they do come in, they're not going there to fight anything or bite anything generally. Although sometimes uh, you will see a crab and every once in a while they get a little nippy, you know, and uh, some of the fish like to to bite a little bit but they just feel like you know you barely even notice it <laughs> sort of sort of you're more likely to like bump into a person than you are to some wildlife out there honestly because so many people just love it over there because it's so shallow um it stays pretty warm a lot of times even if the other parts of the water further out are a little bit colder during the summer months it's nice and warm because it's just shallow you got the sun beating down it's wonderful so lots of people over there even during the week so weekends are going to be a bit more crazy but during the week it's still going to get pretty packed so keep that in mind if you're going to go and rent a boat or a jet ski more pertinent if you're going to rent a boat if you're not super confident in your boating skills you probably don't want to get all the way into the center of crab island because it's going to get pretty packed and you're going to get almost blocked in by other people who are also not as sad with boats. So a lot of us more seasoned locals, um, we kind of stick to the outskirts, you know, where we know we can get out of there very quickly, especially because this is Florida. So if you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes. Or if you do like the weather, give it 15 minutes. <laughs> and it might just chase you out. So there are lots of ways to get to Crab Island. One of them is taking your own boat or jet ski. The jet ski, you don't have to worry about as much. Just make sure you're going nice and slow. Once you get around people, you know, you actually get to the sandbar. And same with the boat. With, with the boat, try to make sure that your engine is up as much as possible so you don't drag that into the sandbar or you know knock out a person's leg or something crazy with it so be very careful actually once you get inside generally what we suggest is you kill the engine put pull, put the engine all the way up and then walk it in to wherever you want and then when you're anchoring all right tourists that are renting a boat make sure you're anchoring where everybody else is anchoring and it's going to drag the boat in that same direction so if you see everybody's anchor is this way don't try to put it behind you thinking that that's going to be okay because you're going to swing all the way back over here
here with the current. I see people mess this up all the time. It drives me crazy. So tr please try to make sure you do that. Now, those aren't the only ways to get to Crab Island. So if you are visiting, you don't want to rent a boat. It is a little bit pricey. You don't want to mess with, you know, the just in general, you don't want to mess with driving it, you know, wrecking it or doing anything like that. You don't feel comfortable. You've got a couple of other options. The biggest one is the water taxis. So we do have water taxis that will take you out. Some of them even have a pontoon boat with a cover that you can put all of your stuff in right when you get to Crab Island so that you can jump off and go have yourself a nice day. And then my favorite way to get out to Crab Island um, outside of bringing your own boat, because I think that's my favorite, is hopping on a friend's ride. So this way you don't have to pay for anything. <laughs> But, uh, you know, you need a friend out here in order to be able to pull that off generally. Another thing, you can actually get on your paddleboard also, um, or a kayak if you wanted to go that route. There are some parks right there in Destin that you can, um, you know, put your board in the water and just paddle over there, which is great. Please don't try swimming over there. Don't swim. It, that's like don't highly it. illegal and dangerous and because you... People die every year doing this. Yes. Like you're crossing a channel where boats are going and it's so hard to see a body in the water when you're going any kind of speed, you know? So definitely, Especially if they're 15 beers deep. <laughs> yeah. So whatever you do, it but... shouldn't be happening, but you know, let's be real. It is what it is. I try to be safe. Yeah. So please no swimming across the channel to get to Crab Island. Use, you know, a, a stand up paddle board, a kayak, something, and have some bright colors because much like walking around in Destin, swimming around or, you know, doing something similar um, near Crab Island can be equally dangerous. So now that we've talked about how to get to Crab Island. Let's talk about what is at Crab Island for your enjoyment. First and foremost, the sandbar, obviously, sitting in the water, uh, drinking a cold beverage, you know, making new friends, doing whatever you want there is always a good time. Maybe you're just hanging out with your friends. You don't want to talk to other people. That's cool too. But outside of that, there's also floating bars, floating restaurants. Uh, heck, there's even a floating general store. So if you forgot something, you need a t-shirt because the sun's beating down on you or your sunscreen ran out, you can always go over there to the general store and get some more of what you need for a very healthy but doable markup. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a price for convenience. And you'll also have people, you know, with, you know, small trolling boats or what do they call them? Like John boats with like yeah. motors or whatever. They'll be coming around a lot of times with shirts or boiled peanuts or ice hot cream. Hot boiled peanuts. I want to emphasize that they put peanuts. hot boiled peanuts on there. <laughs> Because that's exactly what you want when you're out on the water all day. I know a lot of people, a lot of Southerners like it. I'm not a big fan. I don't understand why we're eating hot boiled peanuts when it's 179 <laughs> degrees outside. But a lot of people do like them. They are delicious. I'll give I'll give it that. Just I have a nut allergy, so uh, I don't I don't partake. I don't know why anyone would want those things at all. I'm just kidding. I'm sure, they're delicious. And then they've also got ice cream. They've got drinks and coconuts, and I mean, there's just a bunch of stuff just driving around. So if you need something, um, it's it's kind of nice it kind of makes you feel like for me anyway when i see those john boats i always feel it's kind of like uh when the ice cream truck came around and you were yeah. a kid you were like okay i'm getting a coconut drink let's go you know <laughs> so uh definitely a lot of options there and uh there's probably even more that i'm not thinking of shaved ice and things like that there's there's a ton of them just floating around there and they'll come around every few minutes and if you have children and maybe you didn't pack enough snacks or anything you can always take them to one of these little like floating restaurants if you want um you know and get them some food and beverages it's not all just adult style stuff you know you, there are plenty of options for them as well and also there are different types of um, boats that you can rent there are some boats out there with like slides you know if you've got kids oh, yeah. you want to entertain them sometimes there's like this whole like inflatable obstacle course type thing out there which is super fun and you can um, rent that by the hour or by the entire day and it's it's pretty robust it's not just one or two inflatable things i mean they've got some that are 30 feet tall and then a bunch of like ones to run around on and it's so it's they did a good job with that yeah we talked about how to get to crab island what you're going to see when you're out there but what about what to bring what are you going to want when you're out there on crab island well obviously it's going to be pretty hot um most often when you go so you're going to want a way to cool off so definitely if you're in a boat or something if you can if you have an opportunity or a choice make sure you've got like a bimini top or something so that you have some shade while you're out there because that's going to be the best thing for you whenever you start to get a little bit overheated or maybe you've brought kids out with you if you can escape the sun a bit get under some shade that's going to help conceal 
considerably. Also having um, like a like a fishing shirt. Uh, a lot of times these are long sleeves, they're very thin and uh, they dry very quickly, but they're really good. You just get them super wet, put them back on, that'll cool off your body temperature um, really, really quickly. So it'll help protect you from the sun, which is especially important if you have the complexion of Mr. Clean. <laughs> Uh, basically, some of the other stuff you should be bringing is anything you think you would bring to the beach. So obviously sunscreen, um, you know, long sleeve shirt if you can, a big hat um, or, you know, a normal hat, something to keep that sun off your face. Sunglasses. I forget sunglasses more often than not. And I swear by the end of it, I go blind, especially with blue eyes. Like I pick them up all the light. It's not good. So bring some sunglasses, even if you don't generally wear them. You can get a cheap pair uh, really anywhere out here. Um, and then some of my favorite stuff is what you pack in the cooler. There's actually some pretty creative ways uh, that I've realized over the years of what you can do. Obviously, bring your drinks, whatever it is you want, your Trulies, your White Claws, your beers, your, your water. sodas, your water, you know, whatever it is that people on the boat want to drink. But here's where you can get a little creative. I like bringing fruit. Fruit's definitely a big one. I also sometimes like to bring frozen bags of fruit because it kind of acts as ice and then also as a snack when it starts warming up. And on that same note, you can get, uh, for those of you that like drinking, um, you can get frozen alcohol popsicles, basically, which are super, super cool. You freeze them, they stick in there. They, again, they sit like ice. Uh, they'll eventually melt off and it's easy to drink. You can do the same thing with go if you've got kids or if you just like bringing like go or whatever. Uh, those freeze really easy. And then of course, popsicles, things like that. So you can get a little bit more creative instead of wasting space with just ice. You can definitely throw in some extra stuff, which makes it a little more interesting. Do bring water. And bring water. Yeah, please. You're going to need it. Even if you think you're just going to drink beer all day, drink, bring some water. Yeah. Honestly. Especially if you're the driver. Yeah. The captain. Sorry. The captain. I'm the captain. I am the captain now. <laughs> Floaties. Also, whether you know how to swim or you don't, chances are you're going to be a whole lot more comfortable if you've got something to lounge in. So you can get those like those inflatable chairs or um, like noodles are really cool. And they're really great even for people who don't know how to swim. If you're like, I don't want to wear my arm floaties in front of everybody. You could like totally chill out on a noodle and no one's going to know that you don't know how to swim. But if you're comfortable with those arm floaties, that's what I use. You can also, <laughs> get, uh, you can also just bring your camping chairs. And if you're in a shower, low enough area you can set those right in the sandbar just please make sure that nothing is floating off of them or anything like that yeah it's only them unattended yeah it's so good missing or the tide will take them don't forget to bring snacks too. Obviously fruit's really cool and alcohol infused fruit is even better, but you're gonna need something to sit in your stomach pretty solidly as well. So bread is good for soaking things up. You can make some sandwiches pretty easily and they'll keep in a bag, keep your condiments separate so that your bread doesn't get soggy. There's a little pro tip for you. And if you're looking to uh, not have to do the work of making a sandwich, which I know isn't that difficult, but if you're just like, hey, let's run out uh, real quick and go. One of my favorite things to bring are Uncrustables, okay? These are little self-made <laughs> yeah. sandwiches that are frozen already so it goes right back into the frozen thing um, it's the only time of year I ever eat those things because I'm pretty sure they're not good for you but they are delicious <laughs> <laughs> And if you are more of an active person or you want something to do while you're there, make sure you bring a frisbee, a football, or even a volleyball. Just something to kind of keep your yourself preoccupied instead of just sitting around on a floaty drinking your delicious water all day. <laughs> or beer. Or beer. But chances are you're going to be next to someone if you forget those things. A lot of folks bring that stuff out there. And it's a really great opportunity to make friends with some other folks that are out at Crab Island. Just go jump in on their like, frisbee game or whatever. Yep. I'm naturally very introverted, but when it comes to Crab Island, Island. It's just, I just meet people and it is a really good time, even for an introvert. Like it is a good time. I met so many cool people. Last time we were out, we had uh, these girls out there that had their cute little pups. Uh, you remember that? These little cute dogs. And uh, it was just a good time. I really like meeting new people out there. So if that's um, something that you like, then Crab Island is definitely right up your alley. If you do happen to forget food or beverages and you're not really feeling like going to any of the floating ones and you brought your own boat out, regardless whether you're renting it or it's yours, there are are plenty of restaurants right there on the water with docks that you can pull up to and then go and have a sit down meal whether it's pizza or you want to get some you know fresh margaritas whatever it is you got plenty of options right there and it gives you a chance to kind of get off the water get out of the sun sometimes it, it really takes a toll on you you know that sun beats down and you're pretty good so it's nice to have a little break whenever we take the team out here that's what we like to do is make sure that we block off an hour hour and a half to go to a restaurant and kind of get out of the sun a little bit if you're still with us, go ahead and comment down below with, with which company you used to rent a boat when you went on your trip to Crab Island. And otherwise, we'll just see you next week. See ya. Bye.